Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Three Pound Fish. And hey, today we're going to be going over the j double jig setup. We're going to be talking about live scope and we're definitely going to be putting some big fish in the boat. So if you like this type of content, do me a favor and subscribe to Three Pound Fishing. That really helps me out. So we're headed to the lake. I'm going to put some slabs in the boat, talk about live scope, and talk about some of the other things that help me catch some big Get ready for a fantastic episode from Three Pound Fishing. Thanks to these great sponsors. didn't take long at all. In fact, that's the first cast of the day. Oh, that's a heck of a start. Folks, they're schooling up. It's winter time. Let me show you about, I want to show you one thing today. This is going to be a little different start than normal. That's a slab. We're going to, we're going to let them go today. I'm going to show you a double rig setup. Let's do that right now. Why not? We're going to do this right now. Oh my gosh, the marks are beautiful. We're gonna go through side imaging live scope today, so stick with me. This is gonna be an awesome episode. First cast. All right, a double jig setup. It's probably what I use the most when the fishing's not so great. I don't have any minnows. If the fishing's not so great, I typically will use minnows from time to time, without a doubt. But I also like to use the double jig setup. And that just simply means we're gonna have two jigs here separated by about a two and a half feet, two foot distance, okay? Something that's significant. So. Our first goal is to place that first jig somewhere up here in the line. So we're gonna thread it on here through the eyelet, like that. We're gonna we're gonna give ourselves plenty of place, places to work here, a lot of line to work with. So again, it's the same double loop that we've done before. We're gonna swing that sucker around about five times, maybe one more time even, and we're gonna feed that right back through that loop that you held on to. You're gonna get a gob of stuff. You can wet it if you'd like right there, and that is your top hook, folks. Now, typically your top hook could be a minnow, could just be a hook, could be a lighter jig head. And then we want our heavier jig head down here at the bottom so it weights everything down. In this case, I'm using 1 16th ounce jig heads. There's no reason other than I don't honestly have a 1 32nd ounce head. Now we're going to go ahead and put the other, the bottom one on, thread it on. And we're kind of deciding our distance right there. Again, same deal, loop knot, boom, 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 all the way around about five times. And we fit that sucker back to the loop that you just held. And then you tie it all together. That's the gob you get right there. You could wet that if you'd like. And there is your double jig setup. All right, right there is your double, choose the color, plastic that you want to put on there, and you're good to go. All right, since I've got it on my line now, might as well, might as well give it a rip potato chip, right? So I'm going to use the curly tail still at the bottom. It seems to be the hottest right now, curly tail, bluegrass, on a slasher head, Jinko fishing slasher head. And then I'm going to try maybe just a, maybe a bluegrass paddle tail. These are both 1 16th ounce jig heads, so it might drop a little too quick. So let's see what happens. I forgot to tell you. So whenever I have my, 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 my live scope is on my trolley motor. So because of that, I really like putting the power, power poles down. So if I don't have anybody in my cove, I actually like to go shallow so I can get those guys down. Um, unfortunately, right now I can't because I'm, I'm stuck in around nine foot of water. Those are 10 foot power poles. So I can't use them, but if I really wanted to, I could get up there really close, put them down. Then I can use that, that uh, live scope that's on the trolley motor and see exactly where the fish are. But in this case, what I'll do is I'll use the side imaging. I've shown you that on a, a uh, video before. I love using side imaging. Sit back here, cast, works just as, just as good as live scope. We let that drop a little bit. take off that double jig the reason why is I just think it's it could be spooking the fish I've been having such success with just one that I don't know if I need to 
Water temperatures are hovering around 55 near the power plant. Good fish. Feels like a good kicker. Look at that. That's a great fish, folks. That is a great fish. I'm using that uh, that curly tail, bluegrass. I shorten it up just so it gets the profile that I want. The really oh, a shorter body makes it just a, you know a little bit more appetizer for the fish, I so to speak. Using that white slasher head with that loop knot, there it is. Again, I cut that guy off because I was like I didn't want him freaking out what was coming towards this guy. So this is my go-to. We're gonna try different colors um, today and see if something what else is working. I've got it all here today. got another live scope coming people are gonna think that's ridiculous but I'm gonna tell you for me I just love live scope and to have one on the front of the boat and the back of the boat especially for winter fishing and then when I do the guide trips there's one when I do the guide trips I can have that second live scope right here on the side right here and I can have it's a little easier for me to show the, the guests where those fish are at there's another one these fish are just moving into this cove right now and uh, you're gonna get a, I don't know if you're gonna get one size, <laughs> but uh, that's one big one, one, two small ones. So this was the first cove that I scanned in the morning and I could tell you I saw fish just scattered throughout the entire cove. It just appeared that they were coming from the power plant into this cove and it was consistent the entire time I was sitting here. So it would like be a wave would move in and then a wave would move out and it was just constantly the entire morning on this edge and always roughly around six foot so this is how i'm utilizing my live scope my power poles were down i'm just basically scanning out there looking for these fish and i'm just targeting them with my cast is all i was doing so a lot of times if you see me cast behind the boat it was me trying to get in front of the fish and try to catch up and then ba basically drag it past them so that was kind of the strategy there but great day big fish in the boat without a doubt Baby, that's a good fish. <laughs> Check out that monster. Tell you what, you might get a small one, you might get a monster. That's about a 14, I'm guessing. Let's check it out. Hey, uh, hoodies on the website, 25 bucks. It's a Carhartt. They're awesome. Check them out. See, Carhartt. Still got the logo. 25 bucks only. Not making any money, folks. Let's see how big that bad dog, but big dog is. That's a 14 incher. We're gonna keep him for pictures. Gotta love it, man. Winter fishing is freaking awesome. Hey, if you guys are going to any of the, the tackle shows, the fishing shows, I will be at the Grizzly Jig Show. I'll be there the entire time. Look for me in the Ozark Rod booth. Um, love to talk to people about the videos, about fishing. So again, I'll be there every day in Grizzly Jig Show. If you have not been to it, it is unbelievable how good it is. Um, every fisherman is there, a lot of personalities. Um, again, I'll be there the whole time in the Ozark Rod booth. Check us out. I know Wade's gonna go, Marcus is gonna go. So if they've been in this boat, chances are they're gonna be in the Ozark Rod booth. That's the power of live scope. I can tell you exactly where they're at. What depth they're at right now, they're swimming roughly around six feet. 
six and eight feet. I just cast it in front of them, so hopefully they're it's going through them. That's a big fish. That's another 14 right there. That is another 14. Wow, it's a great fish. Smaller guy. Fishing, folks. It's a great day. Beautiful bluebird winter day. I love these days. If I had a choice, though, I'd want it to be overcast, slightly windier, but it's a great day. All right, we're gonna do something different. We're gonna try one of these slasher heads with a, uh, I don't know what you call them. They call them a paddle, a fin, or it's with like, kind of like a road runner right there. We're gonna give that guy a try. You gotta love good days because it allows you to try a lot of different things and getting this blade on this slasher head um, definitely was something I wanted to try and hadn't recently. Using that dirty milk, that dirty milk color. That's a good fish right there. There it is. Let it glisten in the sunlight. Awesome. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today, I appreciate it. Great days, man, winter fishing, that's a fantastic fish. That's every bit of a 12 and a half. Boy, he inhaled that right there. Boom, thanks for joining, please subscribe. Enjoy the time on the water with you. Bam! Thanks for watching another three pound fishing episode sponsored by these great companies. All right, guys, hey, like I said, we're letting them go. Two 14 inches right here. Solid, solid fish. Ooh, baby. Let them grow.